Welcome back AACPS staff. In this next video, we're going to pick up some of the pieces for using Google Earth and get familiar with some of those menu options in the upper left hand corner. Now some of the menu options are going to be very redundant to tools and features that you've already seen. Others, if I'm being honest, are not quite as useful as um, some tools in an education setting. So there will be some things that I'll kind of skip over as we go through because I really want to just show you the things that are uh, best for teachers and students using in the classroom. So we're going to go through all of those different menu options that are there and see what you can do in addition to the tools and features that we've already learned about. File was covered in detail in the last video on the projects tool. Let's move on and take a look at what you have there in view. First at the very top we see grayed out the ability to start a slideshow. It's grayed out because I'm not currently viewing a project but if I had clicked on a project I would have the option there to begin that slideshow. Underneath we have a new tool that we haven't discussed yet in any of our previous videos and that's the ability to show grid lines. When you're pretty far zoomed in on earth as I am right now you'll see that you get Get some pretty detailed grid lines here um, but as I begin to scroll out they will become uh, larger less detailed until I truly am on uh, exactly what is the latitude and longitude lines that we find on earth here so you can turn those on and off up there in view and then our final option under view is layers. We did talk before a little bit about layers when we selected it from down here on this little floating toolbar in the lower left hand corner, but there are actually some additional tools in layers that I want to go over now. We talked about clean exploration and everything to change some of those labels for the borders, places, roads, and so on that you can see here when you're exploring Earth, but if you scroll down there are so many more options here inside of Google Earth. One is the ability to turn on those 3D buildings and we'll get a better look at that in just a moment when we start scrolling in and out for some of the other tools right here. The next one is the ability to turn on time lapse. Uh, there are aerial images of a good portion of Earth from as far back as 1984 through today. So when you turn on that time lapse feature you get the ability to kind of zoom through uh, that different time it can help you see areas that developed over time so I'm just going to zoom down here on a, a bit of a close-up here of Niagara Falls and I'm going to go back up here select layers and let's go ahead and turn on that time-lapse feature so that we can see it running it does take a moment for Google Earth to kind of re-render that image once you turn on that time-lapse feature, but in that information card that opened on the right-hand side, you'll see that we are progressing without any action on my part from 1984 through 2022, which is the last uh, of the aerial imagery that they have, and then once it runs through that, it will simply start over. You'll notice the older imagery is much more grainy. High definition photography was not a thing back in 1984. So those images do tend to get fairly grainy. You're not getting a lot of detail, but you can see how the neighborhoods are changing, how towns are being built up. This is great if you want to talk about deforestation or if you want to to talk about um, the birth and growth of cities. It's amazing to take kids to a place like Las Vegas and watch an entire city spring up out of the desert using this time-lapse feature right here. You do have the ability to pause it if you want to focus on a certain period of time. You can change the speed of it if you want to take more time to examine uh, the different times that are in there. And then lastly you have the ability to exit out of time-lapse when you're ready to just be brought back to the present. Let's go back to view and back into layers and look at some of those additional options there. The next is photos. We talked about street view. We talked about photo spheres, which are a 3D street view type of image, but photos are not 3D. These are just two dimensional images that people capture and then share to Google through Google Maps. So when I turn on photos, you're going to see that these circles appear all over the place on the map. If I scroll in or zoom in on 
on my screen here, you'll see more and more and more of these circles popping up in between the ones that were there. If I scroll out, some of those disappear and we go back to just the larger ones there. These, as I said, are images captured by just anybody who goes and visits this place. They capture these images and then they upload them to Google Maps and share them with Google and give Google permission to share them with all of us, anybody who's navigating Google Maps or Google Earth. When you select on one of these, as I said, it's not a three-dimensional picture. I can't turn and look around. It is simply a 2D picture that someone captured with a camera or their cell phone. Some of these are photo collections, meaning that there's a whole series of photos that will open when you select on it. And when you use the arrows on the left and right, you can flip through these as though you were viewing a slideshow provided from a friend who had just come back from a trip to Niagara Falls. So you can see that we're just flipping through this slideshow of all of these different beautiful pictures of the area where we're visiting here in Niagara Falls. When you're finished, you can click the arrow in the upper left-hand corner to leave that collection of photos. I highly recommend that when you are not using the photos feature that you direct students to return to layers and turn it off because it does, it does just add some digital white noise to the screen. Right, All these little photospheres that appear on top of my map take away from my ability to appreciate and see the things on the map itself. So great thing to turn on when you want to use it turn it off when you're done. Then we come down to uh, areas that have 3D imagery. Just like if you pick up Pegman, he'll show you where there's street view imagery. If you turn on 3D coverage, it will show you where on the map 3D imagery is available. Now, right now I turned that on and we didn't notice much of a change, but if I scroll out, just a little bit here, just zooming out. If I scroll out some, we will eventually notice sort of this orange box, this very uh, imperfect polygon that pops up here. And that is showing me where there is 3D imagery. If I continue to scroll out, you'll see all across the United States where we have uh, imagery here available for 3D and you'll see that it's in those more densely populated areas across the country. If we scroll back in on this area that we have been exploring here in Niagara Falls, what you'll see when 3D imagery is turned on is if I select my tilt that was down here in my globe tool set so that I'm in a 3D view, you'll see as I zoom in towards more populated areas that I have buildings that are rising up out of the ground. Imagine going to a place like New York City or downtown Los Angeles or one of the larger cities in Texas like Dallas or Austin, you get these images of these buildings that are rising straight up out of the ground that allow students to explore a little bit better in detail what this place might look like by looking at the building elevations here. Let's go back to our layers again. We see again we have the option down here to turn on the grid lines. That was the exact same option that we had up here in the view menu. So if you happen to be in layers when you uh, want to turn on those longitude and latitude lines, you don't have to exit out of layers and then go back to the view menu in order to do that. The last option that we have here is to turn on cloud animation. It's not usually as useful as some of the other tools because I am trying to look at the places on earth, but if you're discussing weather patterns with students, being able to look at the cloud cover in places that receive a lot of rain versus very arid environments might be a great use of this feature here in Google Earth. So let's move on from view and let's take a look at what's in our add menu. You'll notice you have the option to drop a placemark again. Lots of redundancy here in Google Earth, lots of ways to start a project and mark places on the map. The next one is the polygon tool and we have not yet discussed the polygon tool. This gives you the option to make lines or shapes here in Google Earth. When you select on this polygon tool, you have the ability to click and make a mark somewhere here on Google Earth. And then you can move your cursor to another location and click and make another mark. Move to another location and click and make another mark. And you'll notice what I'm doing is I'm drawing a line or a path across uh, this portion of the river here in Google Earth. As I'm marking out these points, it's also uh, calculating the length 
or distance of this path that I'm drawing. So if you wanted to map the journey of a character, you could easily use this path tool. When I'm finished drawing my line, I can click the done down here at the bottom of uh, this little information card and I can click and I will no longer be drawing lines. So it's very important that you click when you're done so that you stop drawing these additional lines. Then I have the ability to even add this to my project. So in addition to all of the locations that I might be capturing as a part of my project, I can also add lines and polygons. Let's talk about the difference between a line and a polygon. Now you'll notice that it was up here under the add tool, but it is also on what we call the quick actions toolbar. So right here without having to click into a menu at all, I can click to begin creating a path a line or a polygon and the difference is with the polygon I'm going to click and continue to click and when I'm done I'm going to return to my original dot or marker that I made on the map. When I get there or close to that spot I get an option that says close the shape and if I click now it does in fact close in my shape right there. Now notice in the information card it's changed from just the distance around the outside, the perimeter of that path, but it's also added in the area on the inside. And once again I have the ability to save and add this to the project. So if you wanted to show the boundaries of a particular area for a character or where you visited, you have the ability to add this. You can also change the title of it. So again, just like before when we were adding places to our project, we had the ability to customize the title of the place. I can also customize the title of my polygon, my shape, my path that I've drawn here. Then I have the ability to change the color of the outline, just like I could change the color of my markers. So if I wanted something that stands out a little bit more, I can do that. And then I have the ability to change the opacity and the color of the fill for this particular shape. So so if I really wanted to draw someone's attention to it and I didn't care if they were able to see the places behind it, I could ramp up the opacity to 100% or turn it all the way down to 0% so that they can see what is within the border or so that I'm completely obscuring that and then change the color again uh, to match that opacity. So if I had turned it all the way up to 100% uh, for the fill there, you would see that now I just have a solid red polygon drawn on the screen right there. But once again, if I change the opacity back down to zero, I get no red in the center of it. And if I change it back to that default of 25, we just kind of get a faint red shading over top of that. So that is creating lines or paths and creating polygons by closing in your shape and then adding those to your project if you choose to. Moving on from our add tool, we're going to talk about the tools option here on the menu. Inside of tools, you'll find the measurement tools. And once again, because that is a very valuable tool in an educational setting, you'll find that it's also right here on your quick actions toolbar. Your measurement tool, much like your polygon or line tool, allows you to place a mark, place another mark, and measure the distance between those two markers. I can zoom out and continue to make additional marks. So if I wanted to find out how long it would take me to get from point A to point B or how many miles or kilometers it is from point A to point B, I can easily use this measurement tool for that purpose. And it's continuing to add the distances as I continue to click and add additional points. So a great way to figure out how far apart uh, different objects or places are here on Google Earth. Once again, when you're done, you click done. It's going to keep that path drawn right here with the total length and once again, the option to add it to your project if you would like to. So that's our quick look at the menu here in Google Earth. In our final video, we're going to come back and we're going to talk about that really important menu option that we haven't discussed yet. We're going to talk about settings. So I hope you've learned some things about navigating with the menus, and I'll see you guys in the next video.